Hey, this is Mad Movie Mark of the Mad Movie Mark Movie Review. Thank you for joining me as I review the 1970 French drama, The Wild Child. Hey, that's there's still a lot left to see here. I'm reviewing every movie that has 100% fresh rain on Rotten Tomatoes. I'm giving them all a score of 1 to 10. After I watch them and score them all, I will rank them from worst to best. I started in the 1927 movie era, and now I'm at 1970 with The Wild Child. This movie has 100% fresh rating from the critics and an 81% fresh rating from the audience. It was directed, written by, and stars Francois Truffaut as Dr. Jean Etard and stars Jean-Pierre Cargill as Victor, the wild boy of Averon. So I will say when this movie opens up, uh, it is kind of uh, a little slow, and the child actor in this movie uh, it seems like he's overacting a bit at times. Now, I realize he's very young. Uh, he has really no speaking parts in this movie except for the word milk. Um, but he does seem to have odd mannerisms that I don't know if a wild child would actually have. Um, the movie eventually later on becomes a little more endearing. Um, but I don't know. I was a little off put by this child. Uh, child actors for me are really hit or miss. And I'm not going to say this one was a miss, but it definitely wasn't a hit. So what this movie is about is there is a wild child who is around 12 years old uh, who will later be named Victor. He is a feral boy who is growing up in the woods. Uh, he is found by a group of hunters and reluctantly is taken to a center for the deaf, blind, and mute. Now, uh, they take him here because since he wasn't around any people, he's been feral probably for six, seven, eight years. He doesn't, he's not able to talk. Uh, he just does a lot of grunting at first. Um, he doesn't understand anything anyone is saying. And the people at the center, they make a lot of loud noises and he doesn't react to any of them, so they assume that he's deaf. Rien ne le distingue. Vous avez vu? Il n'a pas réagi. Now we will find out later on in the movie that that is actually not true, that he can actually hear. He just kind of has selective hearing. He hears, he hears what he wants to hear, just like any other child, right? So there's a doctor at this center named Dr. Jean Tard. Now they are kind of using him as a sideshow where they're allowing people to come in and view him. And I, I'm assuming they're making money off of it. <laughs> Like view the wild child. This is the man you've seen in the the kid you've seen in the newspapers. Now this doctor says like, why did we go through all this trouble of bringing this? child into our care if we're just going to be showing him around like a sideshow like i can take him home and i can try to teach him how to read how to write um everyone there thinks he's kind of, thinks the kid is dumb but this doctor doesn't think that he's dumb he just thinks that he hasn't been around any people so he doesn't have any people skills and he doesn't know how to talk because he's never heard um people talk before so he decides to take him home he hires on a woman to help him uh take care of this child as well and he begins the process of teaching him. Uh, he first tries to teach him how to put on some shoes. And I believe after uh, the child, he is frustrated because he doesn't know what's going on. He doesn't know what's happening. He throws a fit. He throws fits a lot in this movie, especially when he's confused or he doesn't understand something. Um, he kind of just like thrashes around and uh, gets angry and doesn't know how to communicate. <laughs> Um, so at first 
he he does a really easy game with the boy where he kind of puts like um like a treat under a cup. There's three cups. He mixes them around and he tries to see if the boy can recognize where the treat is to kind of see where he's at mentally developed. Of course, the boy is able to do this pretty easily at first. Uh, he later on adds more cups and the boy has a harder time of doing it. Um, later on in the movie, he he does this other exercise where he has like a hammer, he has scissors, uh, and he has like a comb. And he tries to see if the boy, uh, he draws these, he draws the shapes of these objects on a chalkboard. And he tries to see if the boy can like match the shapes to what he drew on the chalkboard. Now at first he's able to do it, but it's really just because he remembers the order of things, not because he's actually learning anything. So the doctor like switches things up and as soon as he switches things up, uh, the boy immediately shuts down and becomes confused and becomes angry because he doesn't understand what's going on. Uh, the doctor later realizes that the boy is motivated with water. He loves drinking water. So whenever the boy gets things right, he gives him like uh, a drink of water. He gets him a cup of water. He tries to get the boy to say water every now and then. And later on in the movie, he will actually, it's milk. He, he tries to get the boy to say the word milk. And eventually he does say the word milk because he also likes milk and he gets milk as a treat as well. So this comb hammer um, game that he's playing with the boy, it eventually becomes more complicated uh, where he's doing six items and the boy has to match six items. I think later on it becomes eight items and then he ch erases the pictures and he just tries to get the boy to identify things by words on the chalkboard. Um, this is way too complicated for the boy. Again, he has kind of a fit, but then at the end, later on in the movie, he is, he is able to, there's like 12, I think 15 items um, that the doctor decides to throw out at him and he's able to do it just by words. He doesn't need pictures anymore. And he does learn a little bit. A lot of it is through memory at first, but you know, eventually he does learn uh, things and he is able to say the word milk. And there is some progress towards the end of the movie. Um, but at, at, at the very end of the movie, uh, he still isn't able to like to talk. He still hasn't really become um, a at the level that the doctor had wished that he would become. And in real life, I, this happened too. I Googled it where the boy was able to say some words. He was able to recognize some objects. He was able to, you know, do a little bit more than he um, ever thought that he probably could do as a feral boy, but he never really became like um, ingrained in society. He never became able to have a conversation. He never became able to like really be the person that the doctor had hoped he would be. So in a way it was a failed experiment, but also in a way it was not a failed experiment. And at the end, it's really just a nice story about a doctor who really cares about this boy and really wants this boy to be successful and wants to uh, be like a father figure to this boy. And the boy ends up uh, having this relationship with the doctor as if like the doctor is his father. And uh, it, it, it is a nice family oriented relationship they have, albeit sometimes it seems like the doctor um, does want to be more of a doctor slash professor to the boy, not a father. Uh, he really does want this kid to succeed and, and that is the goal for this child to succeed and to be able to uh, live in society. And unfortunately it just never happens. I mean, this is the 1700s. There's not a lot of technology back then. I, Back then, there were no case studies for this. There was no Helen Keller. There was no Ann Sullivan. Um, I'm assuming, based on what I read, that there were other cases like this where there were feral children, but this is probably one of the more uh, famous ones, one of the more famous cases. Um, and I'm assuming that it didn't it didn't crop up that much back then, so they, they didn't really know how to handle it. Uh, the doctor definitely did the best he could. He definitely gave everything he had to teaching this boy. Um, 
but unfortunately it just didn't end up how he wanted it to end up. Uh, I thought this movie was pretty good. Um, I, I mean, it's not like a, it's not a great movie. I didn't think, uh, it's got a really nice relationship between the boy and the father, um, with true stories like this, it's hard to really critique it, um, especially since this story was like from the 1700s. Uh, you really have to take what they're saying um, and what you're reading as what actually happened. Um, and it seems like it followed the story pretty closely. Uh, at the end of the movie, I don't think they actually tell you at the end of the movie that it was a bit of a failure or that there's no real closure at the end of the movie, I felt like. Um, they don't really tell you how far the kid got. Uh, from what I remember, I just watched this movie a couple of minutes ago and I, I, I watched it to the end and I don't remember them really having any closure of what happened. That's why I went and read it online. Um, but I thought this movie was pretty good. It, it was well acted. Um, like I said, I thought the child at some times was a bit overacting, um, but he's young. And for a young child actor who really has no speaking parts, who really just has to act out things and, and, and make grunting sounds, I thought he did a pretty good job. It definitely could have, could have gone worse there. And um, for writing and directing and acting, Francois did a fantastic job as well. Um, yeah, the story was great. The, the script I thought was, was good. I mean, it's based on a true story. But I mean, all in all, I would just say that it is a... Uh, it's it's a it's a fairly good movie. I didn't I didn't think it was great. I didn't think it was bad. I think at the end of the day, I will remember this movie just because of the subject matter, and just because how close it is to like the Miracle Worker. And I definitely remember that watching the Miracle Worker uh, when I was in school. But yeah, I thought this movie was good. I give it an eight out of ten. I hope you join me for my next review. <laughs> oh jeez. Oh god. My next review is going to be of Multiple Maniacs, which I have watched. I actually watched all these movies about a month ago. I rewatched this one just because I wanted to refresh my memory. I wanted to refresh, you know, after 30 days, you kind of forget like what a movie is about. But I wanted to refresh my memory on this movie. Um, I watched this, I watched Mul Multiple Maniacs. And um, I watched The Last Picture Show. I will not rewatch Multiple Maniacs um, ever again. So that's my next review. I will just let you know ahead of time that I will never watch this movie again, Multiple Maniacs. Uh, but I hope you enjoy me. I hope you join me for that review. Thank you. Have a good day.